to 57 hours until kickoff to the 2022 NFL season. Huge guests on our show to break it all down. For the first time ever, it is up in Adams, people. Let's go. September 6, 2022. It has been 115 days since I've been on morning television talking sports. I have to tell you, it feels so good to be back. It feels amazing to be in this building with FanDuel partnering on something new, on the future. And I'm going to be here every morning talking sports headlines with the most passionate fans in the world. That's you guys. Thank you for joining. You guys can be part of the show at Up and Adam Show on Twitter. Uh, we got a lot to get to because we are sitting here two days away from kickoff. We've got Rams and Bills to talk about. Baker facing the Browns. That drama. Trey Lance question mark. Brady's playing at 45. Aaron Rodgers and all of that. Where shall we begin? I know exactly where I want to with this very special guest joining us to help break it all down. <laughs> No, I'm going to miss the headset. I'm not going to lie. And the visors, maybe those would appear on Fox on NFL Sunday. Uh, uh, 16 years, of course, head coach, leader of the Saints. You made history in New Orleans, and you're doing it today as my very first guest, Super Bowl champion and new addition to Fox NFL, Sean Payton. Good morning. Good morning, Kay. Thank you. Man, I'm honored, first off, to be appearing on your first show. Uh, so congratulations uh, to you and... Uh, I know we'll tune in. I'll have a lot of time now to watch it. So um, looking forward to talking football. Well, you won't have that much time because you're a TV star now. Uh, I don't know where you are, what's behind you. It looks beautiful, but you have this new adventure you're starting. So congratulations to you. Fox NFL Thank kickoff, you. 11 a.m. Uh, are you ready? Nervous? Uh, I'm excited. You know, the first uh, opportunity was um, a week and a half ago for a preseason game in Baltimore. Uh, we're in Phoenix with Baltimore and we did a, you know, pregame and a halftime piece. And, uh, that there's such a good group of guys and, 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 and girls that, that work there. I feel like I've always been in the NFC. And so we've always been covered by Fox. And so many of those, uh, people I've interviewed with and spent time with production meetings and it really, uh, was a good fit. I love it. And you're, I saw you, you love Isaiah Likely uh, on that Ravens team. I watched your debut. How do you not? <laughs> right? How he do went not? off. Well, maybe we'll talk about Lamar here in a minute because there's so many exciting storylines and question marks. You're going to be in L.A. for Fox. Kickoff is in L.A. as the Buffalo Bills will uh, invade Los Angeles to take on the Super Bowl defending champions. Coach, you are an offensive mastermind. I'm so grateful that you're on the show. And you also faced the Bills last year on Thanksgiving. There's a lot of going up against you in that game. But you saw Allen up close and personal. So what makes him so special? Well, his physicality, he, he's one of those guys, uh, you know, you're kind of reminded of a young Ben Roethlisberger relative to trying to sack him. He's difficult. Um, you know, there's a there's a run element to his game that is very impressive. And I think his arm talent is is remarkable. He can make the throws down the field. But if a play breaks down and he decides to run it or scramble, you know, that's an eight yard gain, not a two or three yard gain. So when you see him up close and personally realize how big he is and uh, he, he certainly improved every year. So he's he's one of the, the rising stars. He's already risen. He, he's special. So he's, he's already risen. Does that mean that the best quarterback in the NFL is taking the field on Thursday night? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I, I, I think one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL uh, will be playing Thursday night. Two of them probably. And yeah. uh, and then I think that AFC West has got some pretty good quarterbacks in it um, when you look at a division. But uh, Allen is, is – and look, we'll talk about this roster lineup I have later, my fantasy roster. This is my <laughs> first time ever playing, and I was lucky enough to draft him as my quarterback. So I'm pulling for him. Sean Payton, you can take the, the football or the, the guy out of football, but you can't take the football out of the guy. You're, you're now GMing and running a fantasy football team. That's oh, absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. I put it on auto draft like for the last like half hour of the draft and, and ended up with a couple players. Rookie uh, mistake. I'll help you, Coach. Yeah, I'll I know. Help you. It was past uh, 11. <laughs> you mentioned it's past 11. You mentioned uh, the other quarterback. Let's talk about Matthew Stafford. I fully admit 
never a huge believer uh, in Detroit. I got, and I, then I felt like an idiot because he went and won a Super Bowl and it was awesome. The talent was always there. The arm was always there. What is it right now? Was he always this good and I just wasn't seeing it? Or is it this, the system, the playmakers around him? Well, I, I think the one thing at that position, um, and it happens more often than we'd like at, at times, good players maybe end up in the wrong environment, uh, might be the wrong team, it might be the wrong system, and and then find their way to another place, and all of a sudden you see uh, you see success, you see them kind of have a breakout moment, um, and I think that's the case with with Matthew. I, I think. Look, we had a chance to watch and play against him quite a bit at Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, so for whatever reason, uh, you, you don't talk about quarterbacks in that upper echelon unless they're usually in the postseason. And and he just wasn't exposed to, to many postseason games. Uh, and then all of a sudden, he gets with Sean. Uh, you know, he gets with a, a really good defense and, and some weapons on offense. And I'm not saying Detroit didn't have any of those things at one point or another. I mean, certainly they've mm -hmm. had talented players. But uh, the fit was right and the timing was right. And you have a Super Bowl winner. I think you're, it's like you and Drew Brees got together, and it, it's magic. Sometimes it all just sort of clicks at the same time. We'll see if they can do it. He's, of course, dealing with a bit of an injury, and we'll see how that plays out on Thursday. Uh, you know, you won a Super Bowl, made the playoffs the next year, beast quake happens, it, and we, we can't quite get over the hump. It doesn't happen, right? Patriots 3 4 was the last time. I'm in high school. Like, what is it going to take for the Rams to get back, and why is it, in, in your opinion, so hard to repeat as a Super Bowl champ? Um, I think a couple reasons. Number one, it's exhausting. Uh, you know, when you when you play in in the Super Bowl, win that game, and you look back at all right preseason, regular season, you count up all the games, twenty three or twenty four games, however many uh, total you played. Um, it's a long season. It's 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 a full month longer than your opponents. Um, and then number two, I think we we have transition with so many players, almost close to 28, 29% per roster every year. Uh, so th those question marks come up. And and then I think the other challenge is just handling success. Uh, you know, after, you, after you've won that game, um, you know, creating that sense of urgency to do it again can sometimes be challenging. It's certainly challenging, you know, for a coach and it's challenging for the players themselves. So, uh, you know, getting back to that game would be obviously a big accomplishment. And it really makes you appreciate what Buffalo did going four years yeah. in a row. Uh, that's, 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 to, to me, that's, uh, man, that's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. They never got a single win in those four trips. Maybe this is the year. I mean, the Rams want to go back and win, but it's not going to be easy. Uh, might be a little easier to kick off the season. No Tredavious White for the Buffalo Bills. I can't imagine Cooper Cup is not going to have his way on the field. Any predictions? How do you see it going on Thursday night? Um, look, I, I think generally speaking, early in the season, defenses are a little ahead of the offense. So, I, you know, I'll see a little mm. lower scoring game. And uh, I'll take the home team. You know, the defending champion, I don't know what the record is on these Thursday night openers, but I think it's pretty favorable for the team that uh, that gets to host the game. And, you know, they're going to raise the banner in that stadium yeah. and uh, the crowd will be excited. So I, that's always a tough environment to play in when you're on the road. I think Buffalo is going to travel well. McVay has an excellent record when it comes to winning the openers to the season. Uh, I want to talk to you about Bucks cowboys because you're brilliant. And also, you have some sort of top secret kryptonite-like file to stop Tom Brady to consistently crush the <laughs> hopes and dreams of the one and only GOAT. You are 4-1 and one in the last five games, games against Tom. How do you do it? Well, I think this. I think we played very good defense in those wins. And if you, if you look uh, at statistically at all four of those games, um, the pressure percentage was up. Uh, I know we early in the game were able to get to him. Um, you know, if he gets time and, and you let the receivers give them access into the, your, into your defense, it's going to be difficult. So somehow you got to disrupt the timing of the passing game, and it's easier said than done. But I would say in each case, we played very well defensively, and then offensively, uh, they were they were 
different scenarios like the Sunday night game. Everything went well. That was two years ago. And, and you know, we scored a lot of points on the road. Uh, the more recent win was last year. I had COVID. And I watched it on TV with you. And, <laughs> you know, that was a real low scoring game. But ultimately, I think that they, you know, we handled the turnovers. And I, I think most importantly, you got to somehow affect that, that, that spot behind the center uh, where oh. Brady wants to where he wants to climb up in the pocket, <clears throat> you have to occupy that spot about three yards right behind the center. I, I don't think you were going to give me that much info on how to do that. Now, does Dennis Allen, who ran the defense, of course, now the head coach, does he have that file? Does he have the secrets? And, you know, he had a, a, a stint uh, with Oakland. It was relatively quiet. What do we need to know about Dennis Allen and how he can handle this this year? I, I think, listen, I think DA's uh, extremely bright. Uh, he's been a head coach. I think that... Um, it's a great situation that he's coming into. I think he said that already. There's a lot of continuity there. Mickey Loomis has been the GM there for, shoot, the whole time I was. Um, and they've got a veteran team. They've got a team, I think, that uh, they've got a team that I think wins the South this year, not Tampa. Um, and and I think defensively you'll see uh, one of the better defenses in our league this year. Peter King just has them. Yesterday he said he has them, I think, as the one seed out of the NFC. I don't know oh, if you saw Oh, does he really? That. Yeah, he claimed them as the one seed. What are your thoughts on that? You think they win the division, and I love to hear it. Yeah, I think they win the division. Um, here's the thing. You know, Tampa, it's going to be those two teams. And I haven't paid a, a lot of attention to what's going on in Tampa Bay's training camp. But I do think that anytime those two teams play, New Orleans knows they can win that game. And, and – I think that uh, that's pretty powerful when, when you have that confidence. So um, I'm sure it'll be a close race and we'll follow it closely. I didn't know that Peter picked him to be the one seed, though. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. It's risky if all, everything breaks right, but you, you're not there. We, I, I love Dennis Allen. I'm, I'm championing him. You're not mm -hmm. there. Jameis looms large. Alvin Kamara, that's a dark cloud. Michael Thomas, I, of course, have faith he'll return to form. But Jameis is such a wild card in this, right? And that's the way he's always played. We've seen him put up a 5,000-yard season. We've also seen him be a little reckless out there when it comes to turning the ball over. But I did see last year before that injury, you really got him to start turning a corner before any of that happened. How do you balance that yeah. out to sort of make sure that you're not – compromising the talent while you're trying to get him to be more responsible with the football? I think it's a great question. Um, you know, it's, it's picking and choosing the opportunities where you want to be aggressive. Um, sometimes you can help him with that, with play calls. Um, sometimes uh, it's the one thing that, that I found with him, which was really encouraging, is he began to understand what won each week. And, and that might change a little bit. Um, but he was playing very well before his injury. And, and I think, uh, from all indications, he's healthy now he's worked his tail off and he's going to take advantage of that opportunity. I think Kamara is going to be fine this season. I, I don't think we're going to see anything on that front until the off season, probably heading into next year. Um, of course there's, there's some turnover. You have a new head coach, but Pete Carmichael has been the offensive coordinator. He, he was for me for, 16 years and, and he's called plays. He's called plays in the 11th season and he called all of 12th season uh, when when I was gone. So um, although there's turnover, uh, that, that change will be minimal uh, compared to the other staffs that completely flip. So the Saints have your support. They are taking the South, not the Buccaneers, who face the Cowboys. Now the Cowboys, lots of talent, offensive line drama, of course, with injuries. What's holding them back? Yeah, well, look, they had a great season last year, and it's it's just uh, it's always disappointing when you put together the, what they did statistically, both sides of the ball. They improved so much defensively under Dan Quinn, and and that you don't you know you don't win that first playoff game, so that kind of overshadows all the things that that went on that were really positive. So, look, I think it'll be interesting. I I, I like Dallas in this game. Uh, I think Dallas's defense uh, is improved again. I think Dan does a great job. Those guys play with uh, with great speed to the football. They'll turn it over. Um, I like them winning this game. Uh, Tampa's got a tough stretch here in the first three weeks. I think they go at Dallas, at New Orleans, and then home versus Green Bay. So that, that's that's going to be uh, 
a big challenge for them. Uh, I'm sure if they could get two of those three, they'd, they'd be pretty happy. You know the schedules for the teams. Sean Payton, you were ready to go, Fox. Hey, Lucky I'm totally to... <laughs> prepared. What did you think you were getting this morning, huh? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't... What have you been up to? I feel you're, you seem very calm and, and uh, at peace with not being on the football field, but I can't imagine that in, in two nights you're watching this game in L.A. that that itch doesn't start, you know, doing its thing, right? <laughs> yeah. <it'll... laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm up here in uh, Gazer Ranch, Idaho. Oh. Um, so golf course behind me, um, it's a little chilly and, uh, I'll be making the trip back and forth on the weekends and, and, and watching just like everyone else, uh, Thursday night. It's kind of hard to believe it's already here. Uh, it really is. It seems like that time has gone by real fast. Yeah. How much is a membership at Gaza Ranch, Google? I'm not even going to look cause I don't know what that is, but I can't imagine. I, I got it three years ago. It was very affordable and I don't know that it is anymore. Okay. okay, we'll talk about that. Um, do you have yeah. any surprises or like things that you're looking at from your offensive mind that we need to be paying attention to? Underrated guys or storylines or just um, um, some guys who you are really excited to see for the season storylines? I'm excited to see I'm, ex I'm excited to see Baltimore. Um, yeah. I did the preseason game and I think that's going to be a team that I'd pick to to be playing in, uh, in Arizona at the end of the year. Um, uh, I like the way that team looked um, I'm a big fan of John Harbaugh's. Um, we've worked together before. Uh, that's who I think comes out of the AFC uh, in, in, in plays. I'm still trying to figure out the NFC, but that was an impressive roster. And, and I think, uh, you know, they're a lot healthier. Their training camp's gone a lot, a lot better. Last year they were banged up, I know, quite a bit. Um, that would be one team. I think the Chargers uh, are another team that have to show progress. Like we need to see forward steps from them. The quarterback's too talented. Uh, they're skilled people. I know they've made some off season acquisitions and, and are trying to beef up their pass rush, but that's a team that I think has got some pressure on them. And I, and I think in a tough division and I, I still don't get it. I still can't get past or overlook Andy's team and Kansas city. I think they're still the team to beat in that division. I think they're the best on both sides of the team, though. Justin Herbert, you want to see improvement. He threw 38 touchdowns and 5,000 yards last year, and he's still developing. He's just getting started. So Yeah, I want to see a little bit more from the win column, and I want to see a team that gets into the postseason. You know, in other words, statistically speaking, he was magnificent. But, you know, we just had that talk about quarterbacks in the postseason and, and all the other things that come with it. And it's time for, for that to happen with him. Yeah, I'm with you on uh, on the Ravens. I've been going very far, but the Lamar thing, should I be worried about that? I mean, is he going to flacco it and get paid after a great season? Yeah, I don't know. Um, gosh, it, it's unusual without the agent and everything. Yeah. So uh, I, I think, look, those things generally play out. Uh, I know those guys in Baltimore will do a great job communicating with he and and the people in his circle, um, John will be real smart and, and handle that, uh, certainly in a delicate fashion, but handle it the right way. Coach, Gazer Ranch looks like it's painted, like Pete, like, like Bob Ross painted it. On This is an insane place that you're at. I'm going to need photos. We're going to take a short break. I'm going to pull up your fantasy team if you can send it to me, and I'm going to relentlessly make fun of it. Is that okay? Yeah, you're going to make fun of my team. Yeah, I am. You, you right. know real football, I know fantasy football. We'll be back up in Adams after this. All right. <laughs> ever show outstanding coach Peyton says hey hey uh, convinced the Saints winning the division Ravens aren't beating the Bills though we'll see all right we've got Fox NFL analyst Sean Peyton joining us uh, Fox NFL analyst and Gaza Ranch bougie member and uh, fantasy football owner for the very first time so you can see you on NFL kickoff every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Fox but let's bring up this fantasy team Josh Allen so did you have the, like what pick did you take him first no, we didn't. We didn't take quarterback first here. A little help from my son. Uh, okay. First overall was uh, was the runner, Jonathan Taylor. Oh, Josh yeah. Allen. I think I selected. Uh, I want to say third. Um, so he's listed first on that depth chart that we're looking at. Was this a six-team league, sir? This is like this is like a nine-team league. Oh, pfft. Sean. Right. 
Sean. Listen, it's my, I'm just getting in the water, Kay. I'm not going to just jump into the deep end. I'm just you learning have, how to play. You have the best quarterback and the best running back in fantasy football. So you scored there. Um, so I have a good draft. You did a great draft. You auto-drafted after the 10th round. I don't, I don't, I don't even know what to say no, about I that. I auto-drafted the kicker, and, and as I'm sitting here looking at it, yeah. a, a little concerned that, look, is he going to get the opportunities? I mean, I don't know. Uh, the kicker was auto-drafted, so I what can't you, take credit for that pick. What are you saying about kickers, that you auto-drafted one? It was just past my bedtime, and I just I went to the little auto draft section, and it, it just went to sleep. Now, if we go to the division that you uh, were a part of for 16 years, 15 seasons, uh, you have you do you were pretty objective in grabbing Kyle Pitts, who I happen to think, and we'll talk fantasy football here in a little bit. I think he's going to be the best tight end in fantasy football this year. What did you see? You saw him up close and personal. Uh, I just see a guy they're going to have to target. Uh, you know, there there's. X amount of weapons with each team. Uh, and I would say Atlanta's as they're trying to build, um, they're going to have to get him the ball. Uh, and I think they'll find, I think they'll find the, a ton of ways to do that. He, he's someone who's long and I think naturally has good hands. And I, I think he'll have a, I, I, I agree with you. You're going to see a little jump in, in his statistics, uh, uh, this upcoming season. Um, I don't think there are a lot of weapons on that offense. You yeah. know, and so ultimately someone's got to get the ball. And you, you take the Saints defense. Tell me about that. Yeah, uh, they take the ball away. I like that. Um, and I also like their, 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 uh, their return game, their special teams. I think Darren Rizzi's one of the better special team coordinators in the NFL. You got the threat of, uh, of one of the best punt, punt and kick returners in the NFL, Deontay. Um, so I like that. That was easy for me. That that because at some point, and I think that was we, we got into the defenses and special teams probably around the fourth or fifth round. Um, but I, I felt good about that pick. And now you have the waiver wire. You understand how it works? Um, not quite yet. I'm gonna. I'll be. I'll be up to speed on it. Um, I like this this receiver from Dallas. Obviously. Yeah. What don't you like about this roster? I don't, I'm, I was joking. I hadn't really seen it. I saw you got Josh Allen and Jonathan Taylor, and I just figured it was a, like a six-team league or something. <laughs> or, or you were in a league with people who are trying to make another Netflix. Maybe it's like Kevin James, and he's letting you do what you want because he wants to play you again in round two of a Netflix film. I don't know. <laughs> this, is, this is a make Sean Payton feel good league? I don't know. I, I, I can't believe. I mean, Mike Williams is an absolute stud. He's going to be a thousand yard receiver. Justin Herbert's going to throw all the time. Miles Sanders as a flex. I, I don't know what you make of the Eagles. I like him quite a bit, but never trust their run game. And I've never been able to trust him, unfortunately. I love him. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You're, you're, I guess your kicker needs work. Yeah. I Look, the runner for Philly Sanders, it, that was one. Uh, he, you know, he didn't put up, they run the ball as well as anyone in the league, but yeah. they do it in so many different ways. It's, it's a little bit like, you know, it, it could be, uh, the points can, can get spread around. We <laughs> were, we, <laughs> Go ahead. no, we were a hard team though, that when teams have a lot of different weapons and, and good design, I don't know that that lends itself to consistent fantasy predictions. And I, was, I think we I were was a about hard to offense. Say. I was about to say, the reason that I'm worried about you, and I hope this isn't some big money league or like you have to get a tattoo of, uh, I don't even know, an Atlanta Falcons logo or something if you lose. I've hit you up in the in the years past, full disclosure, like, sir, do you think it's more of like a Alvin Kamara game or a Michael Thomas game? And, and you are always kind and always, but you're always wrong. You've never been right. <laughs> You've literally never led me in the right direction, not once. And you know it too. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I'm awful at trying to predict those things. And the only constant in 16 years was that Breeze was going to play well yeah. or play well for fantasy. Um, there were so many different players that the ball could go to. And he was one of those equal opportunity distributors that I know that can become difficult then in predicting, uh, predicting scores and touchdowns. But my, my, my son's first exposure to fantasy, he was 10 years old. He played with some older kids from the beach. They had their draft. I said to Connor, this was in 2009, I said, hey, in the late rounds, grab this Mike Bell. He's a free agent running back we signed. But I knew he was going to be 
you know, in our short yardage goal line package. And so Connor goes ahead and he's all excited. He, he's playing with these older kids. He drafts Mike Bell late. And that weekend, it was still preseason. Mike Bell had 170 yards rushing, I think, in a preseason <laughs> game. So I'm not sure if they, they, they threw Connor out of the league for insider trading. Um, that's the only time I've been right, I think. You're never right. You're, and you're always like, you're always feeding Colston. I'm like, do we, can we not give Colston the ball for like one minute? You were always doing the thing that I didn't think you would do. <laughs> but that's what you'll realize if you're a good coach and you're an offensive mastermind and you're, you know, like Belichick's backfield, you can never play any of these guys or count on them because he mixes it up just like you did and just like you will at some point when you come back to the NFL because that's a safe bet I would make on the FanDuel app or FanDuel.com or whatever that we will be seeing you uh, back in the league at some point. But for now, you we're on Fox, 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, and we can't wait to see you and cheer you on. I can't wait to to be back on your show, and I appreciate, I appreciate being the first one. I mean, I, I'm honored. I wouldn't have anybody else, Coach. You're the best. And go enjoy some, what, like golf and, like, massages this morning? I mean, what even happens in Gaza Ranch? I don't even know. A nature walk? No, it's going to breakfast club this morning. Um, so that'll be uh, just a round table of a bunch of us just chatting and then golf. Uh, in the afternoon, yeah, and then out on the lake on the boat. Who's on? Who's at that table? Uh, it's a pretty important table. Um, <laughs> a lot of hockey players, former hockey players. Um, the great Gretzky uh, is usually holding court there, and uh, let's see, Pat Burrell, former baseball player. Do you want to trade Kelly lines Chase. with me? Yeah. Well, I, I'm terrible at fantasy. How would FanDuel want to hire me? because you're Sean Payton and you're at Breakfast <laughs> Club with Wayne, oh, you know, some important people, Wayne Gretzky, whatever. You're insane. You got a movie made about you. Coach, you're the best. Uh, you took a lot of time for me today, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All Thanks right. for having me Coach on. had it right. We got to talk some fantasy. We got more. I got my bold predictions. I've been gone forever. I was in Africa. I was on like a Kayahuasca finding myself. Who knows, but I've got to set the table. Season starts in two days. We'll be back. Seven hours, baby, until the Buffalo Bills sort of invade L.A. and take on the Rams. I'm here. It's called Up and Adams. Uh, it's a new show here on FanDuel. Uh, and we've got a lot of new people to introduce you to. I'm not here by myself. You're here, of course. We just had the great Sean Payton joining us on the program. But I want to introduce everyone to a super producer making it all happen behind the scenes in the control room, dealing with me and my neurotic behavior. This is Conrad Company. You had a year over at Fox, and now you're here. Conrad, welcome. Yeah, okay. So happy to be here. Funny enough, between the two of us, people believe that I'm the one with the fake name. Yeah, Conrad Company is not real. It's the name of a production company or otherwise. Uh, I will, I mean, how great was Sean Payton? I mean, Sean Payton was amazing. I just want to sit at this breakfast club. That's all I could think about. Golf and a breakfast club with Wayne Gretzky? Yeah. What? His life is insane. Okay, but here's my thing. We have fantasy football to talk about. I've been gone, as you know, for a long time. It took a little break, but I'm back. And before the season kicks off, I just sort of have to get my guys out there, you yeah, know? So everybody knows out. I'm gonna call my shot and I'm gonna, you know, champion these people throughout the season. So bring your venom, as you always do, on Twitter, everybody. And Conrad, you bring that smile and some questions. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, Twitter was a blaze while you were gone. Everybody, everybody was wondering where in the world Kay Adams was. And you know what? They desperately needed your fantasy football advice. So let's give the people what they want, Kay. Let's get rolling with a little fantasy fill in the blanks. Ah, let me stretch. Go for it. You ready? Oh, yeah. you ready to go for it? Yeah, go for it. All right, up first. There's a rookie receiver that absolutely crushes it every year, Kay. Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. But blank will be the next in that line. Oh, Man, well, there were a lot of rookie wide receivers taken. That's what you mean. So let's look at, let's, let's just set the table here of these rookies taken. Let's just go first round. Let's take a look at those. And you've got your pick of, of gentlemen, if we can pop those up. Control room. That's okay. We're going to go Chris Olave. Chris Olave is the guy that I think is going to do it. And here is why. Yes, this is the list. So, right, he's going to benefit from defenses keying in on Michael Thomas. I do believe in Michael Thomas. Healthy back to form. You heard Coach John Payton say they're winning the damn division, people. Think about it. Jefferson and Chase, who you mentioned, really good receivers playing alongside them, right? Two-time Pro Bowler Adam Thielen with Jefferson. And then T. Higgins in Cincinnati, an absolute stud. Defenses had to account for those guys, just like they're going to have to do for Michael Thomas. Olave also 
also, Mr. Conrad Company, the perfect compliment. He is, what did you say, a blaze? A blaze. He is a blazing 439 speed, my friend. And I love that about him. We know Jameis, Mr. Wildcard, likes to take shots downfield, and he can do that. Uh, and remember, I will also remember, Jameis, if you can get the best out of him, and he did turn a corner, and you should listen to our Sean Payton interview we'll post it on Twitter. Yes. Uh, he had number one wide receivers in Chris Godwin and Mike, Mike Evans. Evans when he was in Tampa and made it happen when he was throwing. So if he can get those yards up and be the Jameis we know he can be with a healthy Michael Thomas, Olave, because of situation of those guys, is going to have the best fantasy year. I mean, people forget, too. The Saints added Jarvis Landry. So you have Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry on the edges, and then you have Olave going deep. What is this background? Can we, can we change your background every day? For sure. We I didn't approve that. I like it, but I just I feel like we can make it a little. No, we can. We'll give it a little more personality. Let's put you on like an F1 track. Let's put you like at the Hort at Del Mar. Like let's put let's let's play with this tomorrow, okay? All right, I got you, Kay. Okay. I got Brian, you, Kay. Okay. Notes over there. Let's okay, let's let's move on to the next fill in the blank. Though, you ready? <laughs> yeah. All right. A lot of players around the league are under the radar, but blank is officially on the Kdar. Who approved Kdar? Who? Listen, the show is called Up and Adams. One pun per show is enough, and that's the one. That's why I literally made that pun. So Richard Isakow back there could not follow me from NFL Network and decide to pun it up over here. But I will say, listen, a lot of love for Cortland Sutton. I get it. But I'm going to go Jerry Judy. I'm going to go Jerry Judy is the guy here. And let's take a look at some of the route running that he has. This is what he's always had, and he's done so well. This man is a technician. We've seen this three years now. Dating back to Alabama. You know, we haven't seen the fantasy production yet, but you want to know why? Because we have not had a quarterback who's able to get him the ball. He gets a lot of crap for being drafted before Justin Jefferson, ahead of CeeDee Lamb, who Sean Payton loves back in 2020. I think this is the year he reminds people, look where he's going. Like Marquise Brown, Marquise Brown got fed so many targets when he was in Baltimore, even though I don't think he thinks so. But I don't know if he'll – Allen Robinson, a lot of mouths to feed with the, with the Rams. I love him. But Jerry Judy needs to be taken more seriously, and I think he's going to crush it. Oh. Yeah, okay, you know what? I think one thing about seeing Russell Wilson now in Denver, too, as well, is that Jerry Judy is going to be a more athletic, bigger version right. of Tyler Lockett. Oh, is that your Seattle shining through? That's, that's Every, a little... If you didn't know, Conrad was from Seattle, and he's probably going to talk about Seattle, which I love because I feel like the national media never gives them enough love. And I love Tyler Lockett, and I'm mad Bobby Wagner left. Hey, listen, I think Russell's in a great spot in Denver. I have them being a really good team this year. Now he has even... I think he has equivalent weapons in Denver as what he had in Seattle. So let's move on to another one. <laughs> <laughs> let's go into another fill-in-the-blank. All right. A lot of players have something to prove in 2022, but blank has the most to prove. Well, let's look at quarterback rankings. I'm always trying to find a value and who people don't like and what everyone's thinking about. So Fantasy Pros, by the way, is where I go. It's where I've gone my entire fantasy football career. So we are uh, pulling these from there. If you look at this, okay, one through eight, those are some good quarterbacks. Okay, all right, all right. LMR Jackson, sure, he can do it all. Kyler Murray, you know, talent-wise, can do it. Jalen Hurts should be better. Who are we missing here? Can I see nine through something? Okay, not Russell. Aaron Rodgers is 13? He's not a QB1. Are we joking? Listen, I get it. He's slinking off the field in the snow, upset after he loses in the playoffs again. But this was your MVP. This is absolute insanity here. Uh, I guess it's showing that fantasy experts think that the loss of Devontae Adams was absolutely going to sand back his fantasy value. His worst fantasy finish, let me just tell you, in a healthy season, Conrad, do you know what it was? What was it? Ninth. He's never been outside the top 10 when he's healthy. I don't know why that would change. You know how many, let me do the quick math here and pull out my TI-89. That's 11 healthy seasons when he's absolutely crushed it. I don't see the, why that would change now. Are we saying... Devonte Adams made Aaron Rodgers. Are we saying that? Are we saying that? Are, are you we saying, saying that? that? No, I'm not. Are we saying that Lafleur isn't creative and doesn't have a great offense? I don't understand. I just—it's weapons, Kay. It's weapons and it's reps. I mean, you can see Aaron. When was the last time you saw Aaron Rodgers in the preseason get this upset with a bunch of rookies? I think it was like when Devonte Adams was a puppy. Are you looking at preseason headlines? What, what happened last year with the Packers in the preseason and how we talked about that day in, day out at nauseum, and then he won the MVP. We're not talking. We're not talking ship, which he needs to get, of course. But I'm talking fantasy value. We're talking practice. He was what number two last year? Top five? No, he was top five last year. Yeah. All yeah. right. Hit me with your last one, quick. All right, last one. Here we go. 
blank will make or break your 22 fantasy football season. Okay, I've done a bunch of mock drafts. I did one with Roto World as experts, and I was an idiot in it. The number two spot is the most absurd spot to draft, and you get to number two. Jonathan Taylor, of course, number one overall. And then you're like, do I take Derrick Henry? Like, is he gonna, is he gonna hold up? Do I take Christian McCaffrey? Christian McCaffrey is your make or break player because the upside is higher than anyone, higher than Jonathan Taylor, higher than than uh, Derrick Henry, than whoever. Uh, and if he can stay healthy. I know he's working so hard. He knows this is a huge year for him. He knows everything matters. But if you take him and he stays healthy, you have a great shot to win your league, especially in a PPR. He's one of just three players to ever put up a thousand and a thousand. He's had two, not just one, two 100 catch seasons. Dangerous fantasy threat, the most dangerous, I think, that's ever been, right? Really. In his 2019 season, the second highest PPR season, Conrad, of all time. So C squared, as I'm going to call you, Conrad Company, C squared. I just decided. I call you loafers, too. Yeah, loafers, too. But you know what? I'm just so happy that I had such a genius in the fantasy football world actually, like, give me a little kudos. Because yesterday, I took Christian McCaffrey number two overall. So look at that. That's already a little symmetry. You I'd... also told me Aaron Rodgers wasn't a good fantasy quarterback. Take Aaron Rodgers okay. everywhere in daily All fantasy. Right. Trade for him low. Do what you need to do. Uh, C World, great job. We're going to be back after this. We don't know what's next. Who knows? You just have to tune in. And then, Kay, don't forget before we go, you're back. And everybody was waiting so long for you to be back. So check out all these beautiful tweets. Everybody's so excited about Kay Adams being ah, back. Conrad! You love it? <laughs> Conrad, you're amazing. Check it. FanDuel Casinos launched their exclusive FanDuel-branded live dealer casino. It is available to play in Michigan and Pennsylvania. You can play all your favorite table games, a little blackjack, a little roulette. There's a real live dealer who deals real cards against real competition. I got to see how that works. Uh, you guessed it, real money too. So their deposits and withdrawals are really fast and secure. So fast and secure. It's like being at a real life Casino. Welcome to our show. FanDuel TV launched September 1st, and this is the first episode of Up and Adams. This is very much a sports show. It is very much the storylines that I like to talk about, the breaking news we need to talk about, guests and fun and getting to know the NFL from a different angle. But it's also a really perfect opportunity to dip into where the game is going. And the game, of course, I'm talking about is the world of sports betting, and that's where FanDuel leads the way. That's why I'm here. So maybe you're curious, like I am. Maybe you want to learn. Maybe you want to have some fun over on the FanDuel app this weekend. Here is what I can tell you. I'm going to do the best to bring you the best information I can, learning along with you. So I promise you I will try to get that information. I mean, we had Sean Payton on the show. How, how can we do better than, than that? He was amazing. Uh, but here now to talk about some sports betting futures bets. We're betting the future with NFL vet and current gambling analyst at Fox Sports, Jeff Schwartz. Good to see you. Oh, glad to be here. Congrats on the show. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to get right into it. This is your world. Talk yes. to me about who you think might overachieve or underachieve based on projected win totals. Hit me. Let's go over Kansas City here, 10 and a half. This one's kind of surprising to me. I mean, the Chiefs had a down year last year and won 12 games. And I cannot imagine that losing one wide receiver, replacing him with three guys, plus a younger, faster defense, uh, leads to less than 10 and a half wins. I get they have a tough division, but the Chargers are the Chargers, right? The Broncos might start slow with Russell Wilson, and the Raiders are going to win eight games. I just don't understand kind of the, the downness, quote unquote, on the Chiefs this season. A couple unders for you guys. Uh, sorry, producer Conrad, but your Seahawks are struggling. Oh. They're going to have a bad year under five and a half wins for me there. Uh, look, if, if Geno Smith doesn't play well, the backup is Drew Locke. I mean, like, they, they're in a bad spot right now. If you watch in the preseason, I get you don't want to take away all the time, you know, preseason, you know, things that happen to, to gamble on, but they look bad. They're bad. The roster is not very good. Who are the playmakers on defense? Again, quarterback, so important. I think the offensive line will be better, but I just don't see them winning a lot in this division. I think they want to be bad as well, draft a young quarterback. And number three, I'll stay in the, in the NFC West with the San Francisco 49ers here, under nine and a half. Um, they have a quarterback problem, right? They, they're starting Trey Lance, who started two games in the NFL. Mm -hmm. uh, but also Jimmy Garoppolo there just waiting in the wings for Trey Lance to, to play poorly and then go to, back to Jimmy Garoppolo. Plus, very tough division, and they play the AFC West this year. I just don't like the makeup of what's happening quarterback right now. Uh, I would hope that they trust Trey Lance. It feels like they do not. 
So those are my three favorite heading into 2022. The Niners have been under nine wins in six of the last eight seasons. All right, let's talk about another stat that I love. In each of the last 10 seasons, there's at least four teams that missed the playoffs the previous year, and then they make it the next year. It happens a lot. Are there underdogs? I love underdogs. Hook me up. All right, so the first one's not so much of an underdog. I'm going with Indianapolis Colts. I mean, they didn't make the playoffs last year. I, I get that. That's just, they are technically an underdog. But, I mean, with Matt Ryan, is a much, you know, an upgrade over, over Carson Wentz here. Uh, he still has a lot left him. Go watch him play last year. Duke could sling the ball. They built a really good roster around him. A division where Tennessee is going to be much worse, in my opinion. Jacksonville should be better. I think Trevor Lawrence with Doug Peterson gets things done. But, again, still talent-wise, not really there. And Houston will be feisty, but not good enough to win a division. So, to me, it's the Colts easy here. I put money on them to win the South, and, and you should do the, the same. And the other one is the Carolina Panthers. Um, if you look at what Baker Mayfield can do if he's healthy, again, Baker Mayfield's not an elite quarterback, but he's good enough with the roster they have and the chip on his shoulder to get them to the seven seed, guys. Look at the NFC outside of the of the top division, right? The, the Bucks and 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 the Packers and um, and uh, who, who, who do we got in the uh, in the East? The Cowboys or Eagles? Mm -hmm. You know the the Rams. Who's the seven seed? Is it Minnesota? Maybe is it Arizona? I don't know. I think it could be the Panthers. I put money on the Panthers. I think it's plus. 350-ish to make the playoffs, I think it's good money there. Sean Payton said it would be the Saints, the Bucks, and then everybody else in that division. But you guys let us know. You let Jeff know. Let myself, Sean Payton. You can tell him off on Twitter. It's all great. Uh, at Up and Adam's show. So, uh, and you know, Indy, they're on quarterback number five in five years. I'll just leave that yes. there. Uh, let's talk about who's, or yeah, this is fun. Bet the future. Go for it. Who's representing the AFC and the NFC in the Super Bowl? I'm going with Buffalo for now in the AFC. I think it's really Buffalo or Kansas City. This has to be Buffalo's time, right? I mean, they've been gearing up for this opportunity now for a couple of years. And with the Chiefs maybe starting slow with the, with the new offense, uh, this has to be Buffalo's time. They've added the last couple of years, um, you know, to the roster. I really love the Von Miller edition. The Von Miller edition is not really for now. It's for December, January, February. Josh Allen's playing good football. I do expect a little bit more consistency from him this season. Last year, the offense, the variance was way up and down. So to me, it's Buffalo for now. I could change my mind to Kansas City, but I'm keeping uh, the Bills. I'm okay with betting favorites, man. Like, I think they're favorites for a reason. I like Buffalo to win the AFC Conference. All right, and so who wins the Super Bowl? All right, I have Tampa Bay, Buffalo in the Super Bowl. I'm going to go with Buffalo for now. Um, again, I just think that they've been gearing up for this opportunity now for a couple of years, and you know the, the Bucks' offensive line issues do concern me, but the the dynamic play of Josh Allen has you know has me kind of mesmerized with this team. Again, I really like the the way they built their team out inside out. They have the quarterback, and they get it done this year, and they break the Super Bowl drought. I. I know I want that for them, just as an NFL fan. Like, let's, yes. let's, but I don't, there's so much hype. There's so much hype, and then I'm trying to see, like, where do they need, you know, that secondary, the depth in the secondary. They've got a couple rookies having a contained Cooper Cup even just to start the season. So I'm just really hoping Tredavious White gets on the field early. I think if he was in that game against the Chiefs, who knows if the Buffalo Bills aren't going on to face the Bengals and they could have been in the Super Bowl. Like, Tredavious White is huge. Secondary is huge. So I hope I, uh, I hope it works out for them, of course. Hey, Jeff, you're awesome. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for having me. All right. We'll see you soon. We'll be back after this because we have to get into my predictions. LFG. Okay, Tom, calm down, Tom. Tom, relax. We'll be back. Who's going to win the MVP? Is it this guy? I say no! FanDuel TV is here. Take a free shot at big prizes courtesy of GMC and FanDuel. Just answer questions about this week's action on the gridiron. The more you get right, the higher you'll move up the mountain and the more prizes you could win. Time out. I just moved to LA. I need a car. I'm doing this. I don't have a car. I don't want a car, but maybe they want a GMC. Get your picks in for the GMC Sierra Mountain Climber. I like the mountains, Brian. I like hiking. I like this. All right. It has to happen before kickoff for your chance to reach the summit and uh, win a share of $10,000 in prizes. Visit FanDuel.com to enter. Stage manager, Brian, I need to do that after the show. I need a car. Literally, what kind of car should I buy? If anybody wants to tell me and give me ideas. I haven't owned a car since a 96 Nissan Altima, and I need to buy one. Anyway, okay. I miss prediction season. Sorry. I was in Africa having the time of my life. I was at Wimbledon. I just lived my best. So now I'm back. We got a little scene setter, right? I got two, two nights until kickoff. Uh, so let's fill you guys in. I'm going to hit you with bold predictions. We're going to have a whole list of 10 throughout the week leading up to kickoff. Up first, yes, Josh Allen this. We all love Josh Allen. We all love Patrick Mahomes. But what if... Justin Herbert wins MVP! I'm so here.
earlier for this. I said it before, 5,000 yards, 38 touchdowns last season. He's still developing. He's not even at his peak. We know what he has. All of his playmakers are coming back. Allen, Williams, Josh Palmer, Austin Eckler, who I talked to yesterday and cannot wait to get the season going. They upgraded their O-line. They drafted Zion. Uh, I smell the third-year leap coming. The stage is set. They are loaded on both sides of the ball. He's going to lead the Chargers to the playoffs in a loaded division. And with those ridiculous numbers, MVP is in the works. All right. We're going to stay in the AFC West. I'm warmed up. I'm ready to go. Let's go, Derek Carr. Best season of his career. Viking, yeah, we're going to get the Vikings in a minute. Uh, listen, he led the Raiders to the playoffs this year. He's got McDaniels, he's got Devontae Adams, he's got chemistry with him already. He's going to leave the 2016 season in the dust, you guys. That was his best year. I think he has maybe, I mean, you know what I'm going to say, Ryan? He's going to lead the league in passing this year. All the yards will be him, his. He's got a tight end named Darren Waller, of course, and Renfro. All right, and now we move on to my last bold prediction. Vikings make the playoffs. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Packers fans. Uh, you might make it too, but they are doing it. Eight and eight last year with Kirk Cousins starting. All eight losses, one score games, okay? They've got a revamped defense. More importantly, I think they needed some new blood in there. I do. I'm excited about O'Connell being the coach. They're bringing an offensive-minded guy, a McVay tree guy into the mix. Kirk Cousins is going to be good. Justin Jefferson is going to be a stud. For me, at number two on fantasy, it's really between Justin Jefferson and Christian McCaffrey and who I want to take. So Vikings, who I sort of never give enough love to, I'm going to go ahead and say that they're going to do a good job. So I believe in the talent uh, and all of that. Those are my predictions. I'll hit you guys with more. Goodbye from me and my Tom Petty record and my Josh Burrow, uh, John, uh, Joe Burrow photo and all of this. Dolly Parton, just because I'm a woman, making her way onto the show. This is Up and Adams. I'll be back tomorrow at 8. Thank you to Sean Payton, to everyone working so hard to get this show done. And now, guys, we got to do it again tomorrow. We'll see you. Have a good day.